Let's continue our look at support vector machines and see how they would deal with overlaps in their groups and with nonlinear boundaries between the groups. So in the last video, we looked at support vector machines. They are a type of supervised learning, but they're very similar to the unsupervised clustering techniques that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Like clustering, they take a vector of features and they try to find similarities in the features to see which things belong together. What the support vector machine actually does is that we tell it what the cluster is. We give it a group of features and then tell it, this is a good review. These features are a good review. These other features are a bad review. And then we tell it, this is the cluster you should be looking, you should be looking for. Tell me what makes it similar. Try to um, be sure that you can separate this cluster from this cluster here. And the way it does it is that it projects a line of maximum separation between this group here and this group here, the two clusters. So it tries to find the line or the plane that separates these two clusters as maximally as possible in n-dimensional space. Um, how, as you can see here, we can separate them with a line, but we can also separate them with nonlinear shapes. And this is what makes support vector machines a very powerful technique. Also, uh, it's easy to deal with overlaps in the groups. So let's look at both of these very briefly. Let's start with overlaps. Let's go to our one dimensional example. As you can remember, this one dimension is just the amount, the number of times we see the word greatest in a document. It's just a one feature description, a one dimensional description of a document. The red dots are the bad reviews. And there, the word greatest appears zero times, one time, two times, and so forth. The green dots are the good reviews, and they have the word greatest eight times, nine times, ten times, for example. In the last video, we had two clusters that were very clearly separated, and so you drew a, a line right in the middle. But how about this one, where you have one of the bad reviews on the other side? So this is a bad review that would have many occurrences of the word greatest, maybe because it's the you know, greatest fiasco in the history of the greatest theater and the greatest financing of the greatest place ever. So it's a bad review that has the word greatest many times. So many, in fact, that it resembles the good reviews. So we were saying that the support vector machines are like the edges of each of the clusters. So the edge of the bad examples would be this really strange example that has greatest too many times. Because the edge of the red group is now here on the side of the green uh, documents. And the extreme of the green uh, documents is here. We would have the yellow line as the center, as the line separating the edges of the red group and the green group. And of course, this line is kind of silly. This line is not the maximum separation between the group. Uh, this line has very little separation between them. And it's um, really, it, if you get any green blobs um, that have different occurrences of the word greatest, they're going to be misclassified as belonging to the red group, for example. So obviously, we want to try to find the maximum separation between the two categories. We're going to have something called soft margin. A soft margin is allowing for um, misclassifications, allowing for some of the dots to be on the wrong side every now and then. So if instead of using the yellow line as the separation between the two clusters, we chose the orange line in the middle, we would now be misclassifying one of them. The red dot uh, at the edge, uh, at the right side, would be misclassified as a good uh, review. This is a mistake, but this is okay. We make this sacrifice in order to get 
a maximum separation in between the clusters. So because we allow mistakes every now and then, uh, we call this a soft margin. If you've taken machine learning, you remember that this is the lambda factor. So if it's a larger lambda, you allow for softer margins. If it's a lower lambda, you allow for harder margins. If you have not taken machine learning, it's basically um, you try to find the maximal separation between the clusters, even if it means having a few dots in the opposite side. So um, by softening the margins, we can still get a maximum amount of separation between these two blobs. What's really interesting is if we cannot use a line to separate our blobs. So the situation we have on the left is the one that we've been discussing, where you can draw a line and every now and then a triangle is going to be on the circle side, on the blue circle side. And so it's going to get misclassified as a blue circle and we make that sacrifice. But the two groups are still clearly separate and they, they can be separated by a line. That's not true for the case on the right. As you can see there, there's no line that would go uh, across this chart that would clearly separate the red triangles from the blue circles. Whatever, however, what you can do is draw something that's not a line, maybe a circle around the blue dots. A circle would clearly separate the dots from the red triangles around. This is, of course, nonlinear because it's not a line, and that's fine. We're going to use uh, different functions, for example, the RBF, or radial basis function, which doesn't try to do a line to separate the blobs. It tries to draw a circle uh, emerging from the center of the blobs and tries to get these circles to be as big as possible without touching. So they start at the center and then they project and become as large as they can um, covering, for example, the purple dots while also not touching the circles that would um, circumscribe the light blue dots, the other blobs. You can have many types of functions to describe the border between the clusters. A linear function, for example, separates them with a line. You can have a polynomial function, like the ones you studied in high school that have uh, curves. And so you can have a, a, a curve-like separation between two clusters. You can use the radial base to uh, project blobs from the center of the categories and to have these as the edges, the maximal edges in a circular-like shape. And one neat thing is that we can decide how aggressive we are going to be. Uh, there's a parameter called gamma, where if we set gamma to lower values, uh, one for example, the blobs are going to try to project as maximally as possible to the point where the blobs for each of the categories of the, lab of the labels practically touch each other. If we set it to higher values of, ga of gamma, the, uh, the edges of the clusters are going to start receding towards the data points. And if we set a gamma value that's too high, we might even have edges that are too tight around our data points. So they would not allow for generalization. If you look at the example on the left with gamma equals one, you can still get a new green dot that is, for example, um, here in a position that is not uh, previously occupied by green dots, but we would expect it to be clustered with the green dots. In gamma equals 20, you do not have that region covered by the um, um, edges of the blob of the cluster. So uh, there will be no way to classify it as green. As a summary so far, support vector machines allow you to classify inputs into clusters. We tell the computer what clusters we're looking for, and then the computer tries to find the maximal separation between the clusters in n-dimensional space. You can separate them with lines, you can separate them with blobby circles, you can separate them with polynomial equations, but it's going to try to find the maximum separation between them 
so that it can establish a decision boundary of, oh, if something falls here, then it's a green dot. If something falls here, then it's a red dot. And that way, it will uh, manage to perform classification. In the next few videos, we're going to be looking at a concrete example, classifying parts of speech.